Now, good evening. Welcome back to Tecton Z. I'm ZSH Place, and this week is going to be a bit different to usual. So let me explain what's going to happen. So last week we built the House of the Red Panda, and on Sunday I went in to tidy up Tecton Forest and get all the in-between bits that you don't see, all the backstage areas, all finished and beautiful for you guys. And it's fair to say that escalated pretty quickly. And now we have two new animals. So today there'll be no speed build. We are going to take a tour of the completed Tecton Forest, see it all in context and meet our new pals. So here we are at the entrance to Tecton Forest. Let's make our way in. I've added one of the red panda statues to the logo at the top there, seeing as we've got those guys in residence now. Sort of an origami sort of thing, which I like. Uh, and now we'll make our way in and go to the Tecton waterfall. Now I thought it'd be cool to have signage on the floor rather than on signs. <laughs> so um, you can see some of that here with the Welcome to Tecton Forest sign down there. And I've also added one of the new vista points, which is great because it means the guests actually stop and look at this ridiculous uh, waterfall that I built. Uh, and let's go and see the first of the new habitats that I added in. This was sort of in the back of my mind to do. I wanted to try and squeeze some of these little guys in here somewhere because uh, they don't need very much room and they're really easy to take care of. So this is the Peafowl pathway. So nothing major here, although there's a lot of the new African grass on the floor, which just looks so good. It makes a real difference. I'm pretty sure everyone who owns Plant the Sewer has spent the past two weeks just spamming that grass everywhere and then a nice little area in the middle just a little stream there's one of the peacocks now i never realized those slow feeders were recallable until i made this so that's nice it sort of fits in very nicely there but like i say a pretty simple enclosure this i just wanted to get some peacocks in the main reason for this new path is that it provides a really nice view when you get to the end of it of the Flamingo Lake. I think this is the best point in the lake to see them and this path brings you out right into uh, that spot. Ah, and it's feeding time. That's, uh, <laughs> that's very nicely timed so we can see all the flamingos here. I'm really pleased with this. I was a bit... When I originally built this it was just going to be a lake to go in front of the Lima Heights but um, as soon as I put it in, I was so pleased with it, I thought we need to put some animals in it. So it does step away from the sort of modernist style a bit, because it's a much more naturalistic lake. But then I put a modernist shelter behind it, which I think makes a nice backdrop. Uh, and altogether, I think it holds together pretty well. Lots more of the new African grass, like I say, which has been going everywhere in Tecton at the moment. And then we'll go round to the Forest Cafe that we built a few episodes ago. On the left is the sort of backstage area. This is where the forest joins the Grand Plaza. And I've got all these staff buildings in there that we built way back in episode two. So everything that is needed for the, for the Grand Plaza and the forest, it's all accessed from there. So this is based on the Queen Mary restaurant at Dudley Zoo and we've got some nice custom signage in here with all your menu and prices and then into the courtyard of the cafe itself this is designed so that when you sit at the seats for the cafe you get a really nice view of the flamingo enclosure there's been some changes on the inside of the cafe since the episode where we built it i just thought it was a bit plain inside so i reached out to a few people on the bro nation Discord for advice because those guys are uh, pretty amazing and uh, we got some suggestions about removing some of the big expanse of green uh, which is where all the wood panelling and the uh, grills come in I think it looks nicer there's a few more plants and things like that in there as well and yeah this is the, uh, the view of the flamingos from the cafe you can sit with your coffee and enjoy the flamingos Now let's move on to the main new habitat I built. I had uh, what I thought was a little area behind the flamingos, which I just needed to put a few plants and things in to make it look less uh, janky. Uh, and then I realized it was 600 meters squared. So 
I had to put a clouded leopard in. I mean, what else are you going to do with 600 meters squared? So this is the clouded leopard enclosure, um, or the clouded leopard foothills, as I've called it, because they live at the foothills of the Himalayas throughout various parts of Asia. Um, and this guy's pretty shy, uh, so I'm not. Ah, uh, there he is. Okay, so he's up sleeping on his branch. So this is the first time I've used the mesh in the game. So the whole thing is is covered in mesh because uh, these guys are very arboreal, pretty good climbers, uh, and you don't want them climbing out. They'd probably be up that wall like a shot. So um, there he goes. So yeah, mesh everywhere. You can see it in the in the long shot as well. I'm a big fan of the clouded leopard in this game. It's really beautiful. I've used the one-way glass for the backing of the sign again, like we did on Lima Heights, because uh, it's more attractive than just the plain black background because it's slightly translucent and I really like that sign in the game as well I think that works really nicely there's some rock work at the back as well to sort of simulate the foothills but this is probably the um, one of the least complex habitats I've built and he's got a shelter here as well because he's pretty shy so that keeps him away from the guests when he wants to get away so let's move on now and take a look at the Binturong Bowl I'm not sure there's been any changes here since we built it I was really happy with it when I'd finished it, so there's no need to really go in and make any changes. So as you know, the Binturong is one of my favourite animals in the game. I was really looking forward to getting... Oh, <laughs> good timing. I was really looking forward to getting these guys into the game. Uh, this enclosure is based on the Menagerie du Jardin de Plantes in Paris. Uh, well, I say based on, it's incredibly loosely based on. Uh, but we've got a little viewing window here for the kids to see the Binturongs through because the walls are kind of high because we don't want them getting out. Uh, we got a couple of them in here, Pierre and Amelie. <laughs> and this area down there is normally where they eat their food. You can see the flamingos again there. And this is a, uh, a good example of the lush foliage and white concrete combo that I'm trying to get into the zoo wherever possible. And they seem to be pretty happy in here with their little food balls that they chase about. Yeah, that's the Binturongs. And we move through this little pathway out to the uh, next part of the tour. So we're gonna go next and take a look at the ground level viewing for our ring-tailed lemurs at Lima Heights. So there's another lush forested pathway here with some more signs on the floor. And then there's the glass viewing windows where you can see the lemurs when they're down on the ground. They do spend a lot of time on the ground, both in real life and more so in Planet Zoo. So definitely needed some ground level viewing. And this path loops all the way around Lima Heights and brings you out either towards the desert area or back towards the House of the Red Panda. Uh, and that is where we're gonna go next. So here we are at the entrance to the House of the Red Panda. Won't spend too long here because we were here uh, just last episode building it. Um, but we'll go inside, have a quick look here, and then check out the upper viewing gallery. So there's one on the food platform. And now we'll go upstairs to the gallery. I really like this little, almost Japanese style garden at the back, which leads up to the red panda terrace. I didn't show any of the pandas up here last time, so there you go. This is how the upper viewing gallery works when they run their climbing structure, which I'm really pleased with. And here's the other panda down in the garden. So yeah, really like this build, very happy with it. And there's one more place to see, which is the upper gallery for Lima Heights. We can get a really good view of the lemurs up in the trees and the rest of the forest as well so let's head over there so lima heights is probably my favorite build in the forest i think i really like the two level construction i think it looks sort of how i wanted it to look and the, the different elements come together nicely got lots of new stuff in it as well these new floors from the africa pack and the edges to the roof are from the africa pack as well this is a little viewing gallery to see the lemurs on their enrichment platform. So this is a good place to stand. We've got another vista point here for the guests to bring them up here, which is great because they actually come up here even though they can see the lemurs when they're down on the ground as well. 
and they've got their tamarind tree to climb and play in. Boxes to smash about, which they like to do. And then also from up here, you can get a really nice view of the, the rest of the forest as well. And that is Tapton Forest. So thank you so much for watching. I'll leave you with some more cinematics to enjoy. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and drop me a like. It'll really help me grow the channel. Next week we'll be starting a new area in the zoo, which I'm very excited about. So I will see you then.